place to start than with this. We begin with the passing of a staple on the sideline and a man synonymous with the NBA, Craig Sager has died at the age of 65. Known for his colorful and distinctive suits during his more than 40-year career, the legendary sideline reporter has battled leukemia since he was first diagnosed in 2014. Here's Steve Kerr and Charles Barkley last night. A beautiful spirit and a fighting spirit. His light touched so many. Stephen A and Max, good morning, guys. I want to start with you, uh, Stephen A here. How will you remember Craig? Um, I can't really put it much better um, than Charles Barkley and Steve Kerr put it. Obviously, they worked with Craig Sager uh, for years. Uh, they know him better than me, better than a lot of people, but those of us who have covered the NBA for many years, we know how synonymous he is uh, with the NBA and the world of sports, and we know what a wonderful human being he was. He was always very gentle. He was always very kind. Uh, Charles Barkley put it best when he talked about how he was full of life, and he never, he's never met anybody that loved life and wanted to live more than Craig Sager. And so uh, you hear about his passing. It was, you know, it's just devastating to all of us who covered the NBA and who have been around him. When ESPN uh, worked the deal out with uh, Turner uh, to allow Craig Sager to cover his first NBA Finals, you know, I remember LeBron James asking, how in God's name, after all of these years, 20-plus years, have you never covered the NBA Finals until now? Uh, it just didn't seem right. It just seemed so perfect when he was there for Game 6 uh, for Cleveland and the Golden State because it clearly was where he belonged. And I watched him work the arena just walking around even beforehand. Uh, people wanting to take pictures with him, clamoring for him, thanking him for the strength that he instilled in so many people. Uh, to see the standing ovation that he received during the game was incredibly touching. And then when Steve Kerr spoke last night prior to the Knicks game, Warriors game against the Knicks, uh, Steve Kerr, who, you know, he's a very good man, uh, and we all know that about him, he actually put a smile on my face because by him, saying and reminding us all how Craig Sager would have wanted uh, us to conduct ourselves, for it to be a celebration to some degree. Uh, it made me smile because I thought about the last time I had spoken to Craig Sager. Craig Sager walked up to me, and we all know Max and Molly that he's very well known for the colorful outfits mm -hmm. that he wears. And um, he walked up to me, and like Kobe Bryant said on Mike and Mike earlier today, Everyone always looked forward to whatever outfit we were going to see Craig Sager in because clearly he owned it. You know, he, he could pull it off. Most of us couldn't. Most of us wouldn't even think about trying. But when it came to him, he would, he would pull it off every time, and, you know, he didn't care. This is what he loved. That's how he loved to look. God bless him. And so he came up to me, and he said to me, Stephen, you look great. And I looked around and was like, What's wrong with my outfit? Why is he saying that? I mean, do I have one something wild or whatever the case may be? And that's what I thought about last night. It just put a smile on my face because I remember how I was questioning the outfit that I had on because he was telling me how good my outfit looked when he saw me at Quicken's Loans Arena. And so I just think about it from that perspective. I'm sad for his lovely wife, Stacy, his five kids, uh, the TNT family. I know all of those folks. And, um, he was a special man, and he meant a great, great deal to the NBA community, and we're all going to miss him. It's a devastating low for, uh, loss for, for everybody associated with the NBA, with the world of sports, and for folks out there battling cancer. You know, my, my words to them, including people like my own mom, is just keep the fight up, keep going, keep pushing. Uh, because Craig Sager certainly did that to the best of his ability. And uh, as sad as it is to see him gone, uh, we owe him an incredible debt of gratitude for the life that he lived and what he was willing to put on display and share with us all. Uh, we're all better because of it. Yeah, I, I think it, that Craig Sager's life shows that if you treat people with kindness and you have a sense of humor about yourself and um, use obstacles and hardships in your own life as a source of inspiration um, to uplift others. You will be loved. 
And I think what's most telling about the way Craig Sager lived his life, and I did not know him personally. We crossed paths a couple times, but didn't know him personally, had no personal relationship. And as a basketball fan and as a, a person who lives in this culture, uh, I was very sad, of course, like everyone else, when I'd heard he'd passed and, and was upset even when, you, when you know, the, the news first became public that he was um, struggling with his illness. Um, I think the greatest tribute is the people who knew him best, the closer they were to him, the more upset they were, the more they loved him. That's not the case with everyone. Uh, but in, in this building, I'm in L.A. now where, where I did Sports Nation for three years before joining this show, Stephen A. And in this building, everyone was obviously sad and depressed about it. But the people who knew him were weeping. The way Charles Barkley was crying on television, Michelle Beadle and Rachel Nichols were weeping yesterday. And when we discussed how we were going to handle it, because I, I uh, did Sports Nation for old time's sake while I was here uh, yesterday, I appeared on the show throughout the show and we had all these things planned. And then the news came out five or ten minutes before we went to air, whatever it was. And uh, the question was, how do we handle something like this? And the decision, at first, maybe we just make the whole thing a tribute to Craig Sager. And the decision ultimately was, what would he do? And how would he want this handled? Probably embarrassed by the attention. But if you look at how he lived his life, he went to work. Didn't ask anyone to feel sorry for him. Um, and, and did his job basically up until the very end without asking for special treatment or anything like that. And so it was decided the best way to honor him and his legacy is to carry on and do the show. So we did a, a tribute segment off the top, as, as we are doing here, and discussed it because you can't ignore it, obviously, and then carried on and did the show as he did, as he carried on. Um, I, I, I just think, as I said, the greatest tribute to him is the, you'll notice in the media reaction, people watching at home, the people who knew him best are the ones who will be weeping today. Well, the thing that resonates with me as well is uh, the great Ernie Johnson, who's also who's a cancer survivor, who would go to see him to fire him up and inspire him. And it turns out that it was the other way around. That's what Craig Sager did for him and so many others. And you think about the battles that people are fighting every single day in an effort to conquer cancer. And you think about the Jimmy V uh, Foundation and what ESPN has been closely associated with and synonymous with for decades. And you think about all of those folks out there in such desperate need, not just of treatment, not just for a cure, but also for inspiration along the journey, along the battles. And then you think about a guy like Craig Sager, who would go to work and work a game at night and then turn around and fly to Houston the next day, the next morning, to receive his chemo and then depart from there and go right back on the road. And then you sit there and you think about the times that you said to yourself, I'm tired, I'm not feeling well, I can't go, but there's really nothing wrong with you. You knew what was wrong with him and somehow, some way, he showed up to work every chance he got. And it just serves as the greatest inspiration to all of us about what, what we can be made of if our heart and our mind is truly committed to something that we love so, so dearly. And I just think that that's uh, an important message to reap uh, from it all. But again, my heart goes out to his family, mm -hmm. his loved ones, the TNT family, uh, thanking uh, Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith, Shaq and the crew, uh, especially to Steve Kerr and that tremendous tribute to Greg Popovich, who spoke uh, very sincerely about him. The man was, was loved in a great, great way by anybody associated with the, with the NBA community. And the players, I think, are doing an incredible job of expressing their love and affection uh, to him and their gratitude for all that he means and he meant to the game of basketball. And I also want to add, Stephen A., our heart also goes out to anybody battling cancer. Our prayers are with them, including, including